As we look closely at that camera view on the left side of your screen, meteorologist Phil Price watching for two circulations. I'm going to take a look at high-res Doppler radar right now. And this is actually using the terminal Doppler radar located in South Tulsa. And as we look, this is the new circulation that's prompted the tornado warning in Pawnee County. So you can see between Hallett and just to the north of Terrellton right now, that is the circulation. And if this holds together, it's going to be moving over toward Westport Marina and Westport, eventually toward New Peru, maybe as far south as Shady Grove, as far north as Osage. This will pass just to the south of our friends in Cleveland. But that is the circulation that we're seeing right now. Joining again with our storm team coverage on KRMG, we look back into parts of Creek County, again with this high-resolution Doppler radar, and it looks like this circulation has passed to the northeast of Drum Right, and now passing just to the south of Oilton, but it is close to Oilton right now. That's the circulation where we've got the red touching the green, but it bounced back out to reflectivity. We're going to do an updated storm track on both of these circulations as they continue moving east, one in Pawnee County, one in Creek County. Here's the update for you. Again, town by town, just to the southeast of Oilton. That track is going to be to the east, maybe east, northeast at about 30 to 35 miles per hour. Silver City, Lawrence Creek, there's Freedom Hill Fire Department, Keystone Fire Department, Pier 51 Marina on the southern edge of Lake Keystone. Let's go a little further to the north now and do an updated track on that new circulation that's close to Hallett because this one is going to be a little bit closer to our friends in Cleveland, Oklahoma as we watch that move toward the east. So we'll bring on Hallett, and that circulation is likely just to the southeast of Hallett right now. Take a look and see what it looks like with the velocity here from this radar. And again, we're looking just to the north of Terrellton. That's going to be our rotation. So this is going to pass, as we talked about just a couple of minutes ago, just to the south of the city of Cleveland, which means it's also well south of Pawnee. Let's do an updated track on that storm. It's located just to the north of the Cimarron Turnpike, Highway 412, as this moves to the east-northeast. It's going to be close to Cowskin Bay Recreation Area. That's on Lake Keystone. Here's Keystone Air Park, Westport, uh, right on that Arkansas River branch of Lake Keystone. Uh, Leander, West, Timber Lake by 7, Timber Lane, I should say, by 715 as this moves to the east. Now, the current track of this circulation will take it just to the north of Manford. The current track of our circulation south of Oilton is going to be really close to Manford if that thing can hold together. So our storm team continues to watch this very closely. Storm Center coverage continues not only here on Fox 23, but on KRMG, our radio partners. And we're also looking at really strong wind with this storm too. Let me go back to, I'm going to clear the track. We're going to go back to high resolution Doppler radar real quick. And what we're looking at when you see this color transition from green into really bright blues are some really strong winds here. Let me see if I can uh, hit the cursor on here. Now we're up in the sky, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 feet, but you can see we've got, if you, could, if you can read that font, uh, we're getting some 80 plus mile per hour winds here. It won't be quite that strong on the ground uh, by the time that 80 mile per hour wind makes it down that extra 1,500 feet to make it to the ground. It won't be that strong, but it is still an indication we've got a signal for damaging wind. The other thing that's doing is helping strengthen the circulation just to the north of this big push of wind, and that's what we're seeing just to the southeast of Oilton right now. So that circulation, as it moves very close to Olive and very close to Lawrence Creek, has the potential to continue moving right across Creek County and maybe even into parts of the metro area too. And as we've talked about, wind is the primary concern here as that area of really strong winds moves in. I'm going to do a track on that because if these winds hold together, that's going to be big trouble for the metro area. We'll take this track right up, even though we do have the tornado warning in effect that does include Manford. If these winds continue like this, and that's going to be taken, you just saw the new severe thunderstorm warning also issued for the metro area too. So let me clear the alert. Read you the ETAs here of some of this really strong wind because this is going to have the potential to produce a lot of wind damage in the metro area. Manford, 
Keystone State Park by 710, Keystone Fire Department at 712, Kellyville at about 720, Sepulpa 727, there's Tulsa Hills uh, Shopping Center at 735, downtown Tulsa 736, Tulsa International 742, Bixby 750, Broken Arrow at about 753. So really strong winds. And we continue to watch these little brief circulations. So we're trying to hit these circulations with quick tornado warnings. That's why we're on the air. As long as this thing has straight line winds in the thunderstorm that may be 75 miles per hour, we will be on and watch that storm as it moves right into the metro area. Now, the circulation now just to the west of Olive continues really strong right now. I'm going to do a looking at it off scene on Fox 23 high resolution Doppler radar and I'm not seeing any debris lofted but I'm telling you this circulation is stronger now than it has been all night long. Let me go back to velocity and we're looking at this being the circulation. You see some of these bright colors here at drum right. Phil, I don't know if, uh, if you can you check the Oilton mesonet and see if we had any winds kicked up as this moved through. They may be just far enough north they missed the strongest wind. But that circulation getting stronger right now just to the southeast of Oilton. Again, this is probably the strongest I've seen this thing since it's moved into parts of Pawnee County. Uh, it is uh, a much stronger rotation and again kicked up in large part by the really strong straight line winds that are coming in on the south side of this and that helps impart some spin and strengthen the spin that's already there. We're looking on the left side of your screen, our camera is located just to the southeast of Manford. That's what we're looking at here. So we're a couple of hundred feet up with an excellent vantage point right down into this circulation. There is a little bit of good news when we're talking circulations, and that is the circulation continues right along the creek, or right along the, the uh, Cimarron Turnpike, excuse me, just to the west of the eastern edge of the Cimarron Turnpike. That's Highway 48. So there's still a little circulation here passing to the south of Cleveland, but it's certainly weaker than what it was a few minutes ago. Unfortunately, the one in northwestern Creek County here, southeast of Oilton, that one is stronger. And as that continues moving to the east, not only do we have to worry about a spin-up tornado from this anywhere between Freedom Hill Fire Department, Lawrence Creek, and Manford through about 720, but we'll also have to worry about really strong thunderstorm straight line winds out of this. Um, I'm looking right now... Goodness, some of those winds are powerful in this thing, passing right along uh, West 121st Street South in Western Creek County. Uh, we're popping some, you know, I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to go back over to high resolution Doppler radar right now. And again, hard to see, but that's uh, 85 to 90 mile per hour winds indicated here. Again, up higher in the storm, but this thing is a incredibly powerful surge of wind coming our way. Let's take a look again at the terminal Doppler radar because we're going to get a really more significant view of some of these winds. Okay, there's one. And again, this is only about 1,500 feet off the ground, but we're seeing 90 mile per hour winds now on Fox 23 Doppler radar just to the east of Drumright, northeast of Shamrock. So not only do we have that tornado threat, but we also have the threat of winds on a widespread basis that are at the speed of an EF1 tornado just ripping quickly through parts of Creek County. I'm going to expand the view because this is going to be a critical storm track as we look in northern parts of Creek County right now. West side of your screen, we're keeping a very close look at that storm and where that possible circulation would be southwest of Manford. But here's the track on the storm with an official tornado warning in effect for Northern Creek County until 715, for Northern Pawnee and Southern Osage County with the weaker circulation, that's until 730. But tracking big time wind, maybe as much as 80 miles per hour at the ground when we see it on Doppler of 90, about 1,500 feet up. Freedom Hill Fire Department, Bristow by 711. Brace yourself now, you've got 10 minutes. The big wind is moving in. Keystone Fire Department, Kellyville by 718. That includes Lake Hayburn, Prattville 725, Sepulpa 727, Kiefer area at about 729. These are exceptionally powerful winds cutting right across northern parts of Creek County right now, and they're about to pass over Highway 48. And um, 
Again, this is going to be a widespread threat of damaging winds through Central Creek County. And eventually, that's going to be moving over toward Haber and State Park, Kellyville, Sepulpa, Prattville. And we still have the potential for a tornado located very close to Olive. Let's check in with Fox 23 meteorologist Mike Grogan. We continue not only with these two tornado warnings, but Mike, as we said, the more widespread threat is the wind. Yeah, that wind is probably the number one concern as this evolves into kind of several Boeing segments, the first of which is very prominent right there near Freedom Hill Fire, Fire Department there. Basically, if you're looking on Highway 33 and you're heading westward, that's where you're going to run into some of those strongest winds, kind of at the apex of there. Uh, and then, of course, as it bends back inward, we're getting that circulation there kind of within that line. Something I do want to point out, though, if you find yourself within a tornado warning, do not attempt to go looking for these uh, tornadoes out there because they are going to be likely wrapped in rain, not really visible to the naked eye, and you don't want to put yourself in harm's way as you do so, as these are moving rather quickly and also can adjust their uh, movement in terms of the direction as these lines can cause some erratic motions with them as well. So once again, this line, you have just saw the track there, eventually pushing closer and closer to the Tulsa area. Hopefully we'll see these wind speeds go down a little bit, but right now they remain incredibly potent at this time. Uh, looking on uh, the... the once again, the track of those highest wind speeds, it's going to put it near Hayburn uh, State Park there, about 710. Also, the Sepulpa area, kind of the first up in the metro area, more proper, closer to 728. And, of course, that uh, high wind could extend well to the north from there as well. And quite a bit of lightning with this storm as well. We're starting to see more and more indications of that. I do want to just jump to the circulation that is still tornado worn near Cleveland. Uh, not a very well-defined circulation here, um, but still bears watching as we do have that broad circulation located basically on the south ends of Cleveland. This is moving east-northeast, probably more northeasterly, at about 35 miles per hour. Thankfully, over a fairly rural section of Osage County, but if you happen to live anywhere between Highway 99 and 20, all the way over to the western ends of Lake Sky, to go ahead and take those tornado precautions as we uh, want you just to be aware. These can quickly ramp back up again, and it's already an established circulation feature, so that bears watching for sure. So, once again, this is pushing closer and closer to the Tulsa metro area. There are two tornado warnings as I kind of jump to another vantage point here uh, just to kind of show you the overall perspective. We have a warm front intersecting this line of storms and so that can cause the additional spin. That's likely helping to enhance that circulation there in Creek County. And we're also seeing the line of storms extending all the way back to the south and west of Oklahoma City. So we've got a ways to go. The storms are kind of breaking up in a few areas so they may not be severe along the entirety of this line and thankfully we're noticing the storms there in northern Osage County. Still warned to severe but not nearly as strong there. So Bartlesville, if you're watching us from there, still expect maybe some gusty winds, but the severe threat is not nearly as high as it would be further south, especially with this Boeing segment moving from Bristow. Tulsa County, if you're watching us from here, severe thunderstorm warning in effect, and that warning does go until at least 745. And of course, be aware, that could change to a tornado warning as well. The National Weather Service decides to expand that eastward, and that would put it pretty close to the Tulsa area at that point. The Boeing line does extend down towards Bristow and all the way into western and northern sections of Oak Fusky County. So I uh, just want you to be aware that a uh, hail threat also is with us. It is not the main concern, though, but up to quarter size hail still showing up near Oilton, back down towards Chandler. All right, we're continuing to watch the circulation features, though, the greatest of which is right here, southwest of Manford, still continuing to wrap up a little bit further. So this is just the concerning feature that we see as we are just probably dealing with uh, not only powerful winds, but a potential for a tornado there between Oilton and Freedom Hill Fire Department traveling along and just north of Highway 33 and western and northwestern Creek County. For another update, I'll send it back over to Chief Meteorologist James Adelot. Yeah, we're continuing to watch that circulation closely, not only visually on the left side of your screen. This camera is located just to the southeast of Manford. We're looking right down into that circulation with kind of an eagle-eye view of this. And so far, we've not seen any lowering or funnels with it. What we have seen on Doppler radar are incredibly powerful winds. Um, as this moves to the east, right across Highway 48 right now. So with winds that could hit 80 miles per hour, you need to treat this like it's a tornado warning. That includes Kellyville, Lake Hayburn, Sepulpa, Kiefer, Mounds, Glenpool, Jinx, uh, Liberty Mounds, Bixby, anywhere in Tulsa south of Highway 412. If you are in a mobile home, it is best right now to find a substantial nearby shelter. 80 mile per hour winds will not be safe even in a tied down mobile home, an anchored mobile home. We're starting to get some of that lightning right now 
on our tower cam view, but I want to do a track here on this really strong wind, and then we'll zoom right into that circulation. So the main part of this wind, I'm going to take it over the next hour because that's it's moving quickly enough. It's going to come right across the metro area. There's Habern Park and, and the community of Habern at about 714. Kellyville, 719. Sepulpa, 727. Here's Oakhurst at 733. Jinx, Liberty Mounds, Bixby by 747. There's a big cloud of ground lightning strike right there in front of us on that camera. Broken Arrow by 754. There's Broken Arrow High School there on the northeast side of town. Coweta at 805. Dangerous, destructive winds as this moves toward the east. The other factor that these winds are doing is they are helping sustain a rotation that is getting close to Highway 48 right now on the northern edge of these winds. Let's take a look at velocity right now. It's maybe, if anything, a slight bit broader, but it's still being enhanced by these powerful winds sweeping in south of the circulation. So if we were going to have a tornado being spun up with this storm, it's approaching Oklahoma Highway 48 between the west side of Manford and Freedom Hill Fire Department here. Now, there's a church on the hill here on the west side of Highway 48, kind of right in this zone. Really powerful winds on the south side of the circulation as that continues to move to the northeast. This is going to be really close to Tulsa County here. Would expect to see a Tulsa County tornado warning issued for this circulation, at least the southwestern corner of Tulsa County right now. So we'll put a track on that from... Oh, just to the north of the Freedom Hill Fire Department, back toward the east. This is going to be really close to Prattville and Sand Springs. There's Lotsey at 724, Wakiowa, Prattville at 731, Sand Springs 733, and Oakhurst by about uh, 736. Let me go back to the high-resolution Doppler radar right now. Uh, so far, despite what we're seeing on Doppler radar, the strongest measurement that we've seen in a gauge uh, yeah, we're, as we look right into this storm, is Oilton, and that was at about 52 miles per hour. So that, but that was not centered where some of these strongest winds have been. Again, we're going to look right in. I'm looking at correlation coefficient to see if there's any kind of signal for lofted debris. Not seeing that, and that is a really good sign. So despite the circulation, there's a perhaps this thing is not uh, producing a tornado despite seeing that circulation. Again, we're looking right in here, Highway 48, and we're getting a little lower in the storm, so we're getting a little more confidence on what we're going to be seeing wind-wise. I'm going to take a look at, with a little closer radar right into this um, part of the storm right now. And again, we're looking at close to 80 mile per hour winds. We get down, where it looks like that beam's getting close to a thousand feet up and we're still getting some data points in here that are up close to 80 miles per hour. So these are exceptionally destructive winds that are plowing across northern parts of Creek County. We're going to watch this right out here on the left side of your screen. Our KRMG radio partners are with us right now. I want to stress that the strongest punch of winds appears to be in northern Creek County passing north of Bristow, and now it's going to be really close to Highway 48, maybe passing east of Highway 48 right now. But on this track, this is barreling toward the east. We're talking Lake Hayburn, Kellyville, Sepulpa, Kiefer on the south edge of this, Oakhurst, Prattville, maybe as far north as Sand Springs, Berry Hill, and toward Jinx, too. And we've got another camera in Jinx that we're going to be turning around watching this thing come in, too. But, again, the main circulation is still strong. So this is the northern part of this. Um, National Weather Service is going to let that tornado warning expire for... Creek County, but because of the magnitude of these winds coming through, we're going to keep our coverage right here. So there is still one tornado warning remaining, and that's for Southern Osage County. Let's go ahead and I'll take the, uh, the view up there, and we're going to take a look at, see what that looks like for us. Again, right um, basically to the west of Sky Tube Lake. We'll take a look at that with velocity right now. And, and that's going to be our rotation. It's actually a little bit further, so it has slowed down. It's south of Hominy right now. It's not super strong, but hey, you know what? Let's, uh, so because this warning is not super strong, and we've got this line of thunderstorms plowing in, I'm going to kick back out to radar, 
And let's take this back. Can we take the camera full screen on the left side of your screen? This is our Fox 23 Skyview Network camera just to the southeast of Manford. And hold on, this is going to be a big time push from this. And man, there are people still driving around out there. You need to get off, get off that road and get into shelter. So there's a little bit of good news, and that is the tornado warning is not going to be extended into Tulsa County. The bad news is we have powerful winds moving into parts of the Tulsa metro area from this storm right now. Again, I wouldn't be surprised to see 75 to 80 mile per hour winds from this. And this is just about to run right over our camera. That's at the KRMG transmitter, AM transmitter, just to the southeast of Manford right now. And now you can see this, the, the wind and the torrential rain is here. And we've seen some lightning, but wind is going to be the big primary threat from this as it moves right across Manford. It looks like even from this camera view, we're not seeing the most powerful part of the wind. And that's hard to believe because look at it shaking the camera as this driving rain and powerful wind moves in. Again, we're looking now kind of to the south. We'll swing that thing back around and give you a pretty good idea. Um, and of course, the other issue is as we get closer to sunset and this incredibly torrential rain, it's going to be very dark under these storms. So again, this is the view from just to the southeast of Manford right now. Incredibly powerful winds blowing through. Let's jump back now. And again, we'll do a track on the leading edge of these winds because they're getting close to Kellyville right now. So if we could roll back over into that double box, I can give you an updated track on when some of these winds will be moving into the metro area. The strongest winds are located between Bristow and uh, we'll say 412, but probably more like West 51st, West 61st Street. And here is a track on the leading edge of the strongest winds. They are moving directly towards Sepulpa, Jinx, Kiefer, Kellyville right now, 717. There's Oakhurst at 730, Jinx 736, ORU at 738 as we continue to see these really powerful winds move through parts of Osage County and or through Creek County toward Tulsa County. Now, I have noticed, looking at high-resolution radar, that the magnitude of the winds may be down just a, just a touch, not enough to let down our guard. The other thing that we're going to deal with is the potential that these winds, because they're so strong and so organized as they move through, that they could strengthen our circulation again really quickly. So I want to take a look at that. But you can see how quickly we're already starting to brighten up a little bit where the leading edge of this has already moved through with these very strong winds close to Manford. We look back at Doppler velocity right now. There's still some circulation south of Manford, but the official tornado warning has been allowed to drop right now as that weaker, broader circulation now pushes to the south of Manford, but it's close. This is going to be centered really close to Freedom Hill Fire Department. We'll go 51st Street South down to about 101st Street South in parts of Creek County. That's going to move through. Now, you can also pick up that transition zone between red and green. That's where we're seeing the strongest winds. Maybe a little better depiction of that with high-resolution Doppler radar. And you can see it's this transition zone. And where we have these pockets of blue, that's winds topping probably at least 70 miles per hour with this. As it moves toward the east, it will be moving into the metro. Let's check in with Fox 23 meteorologist Mike Grogan. Mike? Yeah, one thing that is a couple of positive things actually to talk about. Um, no active tornado warnings at this moment. We are concerned that that could be the case, of course, at any given point along this line, though, as we find some circulation features that will likely continue to evolve. Here's some other good news. That warm front not really advancing much towards Tulsa. As this line goes beyond it, there could be a slow weakening tendency for some of these storms. But nonetheless, there is a lot of there are a lot of other 
other ingredients that could still make these storms quite strong as they move into the metro area. That said, as storms interact with that boundary a little further south along that line, let's say towards Okfuskey, Okmogee County, we could get some new circulations to form there. So that's why all eyes are in the storm basically from Sky Took southward all the way down well to the south and east of Oklahoma City at this point. As we go a little closer in, the wind's certainly starting to go down. You're seeing a lot less blue here, and that would indicate uh, a decrease in the wind speeds, but the winds are also getting closer to the radar site, so it's measuring it at a, uh, a basically an altitude a little closer to where we are, so getting a little more ground truth as we get closer and closer to the Tulsa area. So that leading edge wind now is basically in far western Tulsa County, extending right to about Kellyville. If you're watching us from there, your winds are quickly increasing. So Pulpa, you're up next. Probably in about 10 minutes or so, you're going to see the winds really picking up outside. And then Sand Springs, you're probably on the way in about 15 minutes in the Tulsa area. We're probably about 20 minutes or so, Tulsa to Jinx and Glenpool, for some of those gusty winds to be arriving. A lot of lightning as well. Well, you're noticing that from the uh, left side of your screen there. We're also watching these storms approaching Oakhurst, Glenpool there at 735, 738, and Jinx for that updated storm track. And also, here's the storm that was a tornado warning, now just a severe thunderstorm warning. The circulation feature has quickly fizzled out, but there still could be some stronger winds involved with this area. Um, the orientation with the radar doesn't show up that higher wind speed quite as readily, but we still could be having that occurring in places like Hominy and over towards uh, the Cleveland area. So uh, switching back over from the basically the uh, velocity to reflectivity there, we're going to basically look outside. All right, we're looking from Jinx here, and uh, you are noticing just at the very edge of the horizon, the sky getting quite a bit darker. That's the leading edge of that uh, squall line coming in towards the Tulsa metro area. Uh, jumping right back to radar one last time, I do want to look at that storm, though, on the north sides of Tulsa, um, moving in towards Sky Took. That storm, not showing much organization, but still is warned as severe. There could be an instance or two of quarter-sized hail or a wind gust locally up to 60 miles per hour within this box. And that extends to Ramona, Vera, and down to Skyshook. So basically all parts of Tulsa County uh, southward are involved in that uh, severe thunderstorm warning. I'm hearing right now we have uh, storm tracker Greg McLaughlin joining us. So we'll get just to him in just one moment. James, as this storm gets closer and closer to Tulsa, still the main threat appears to be the high winds. I'll send it back over to you. Yeah, and it certainly looks that way, that big arc on Fox 23 Doppler radar. That's the leading edge of these strong west winds. And you saw them as it rolled right across our camera view in Manford. Uh, do we have Greg ready to go? Let's check in with Fox 23 storm tracker Greg McLaughlin. Greg, where are you? What have you seen? Uh, yes, James. I'm on Highway 51 currently just east of Manford. Uh, we were tracking that area of rotation earlier, and we did get a visual on it briefly near Manford as it was including back into uh, on the north side of that Boeing feature. Uh, we've had very intense cloud-to-ground cloud -ground lightning with this, uh, copious amounts of heavy rain. Um, if you're traveling on Highway 51 near Yale, there was a semi overturned across Highway 51 on the west side of Yale that was blocking traffic both directions. Uh, so you'd have to detour your route if you're headed that way. Uh, we haven't seen much hail, probably about P to dime size. So, again, it's the heavy rain and the wind threat that's the highest with these storms. All right. Thank you. Fox 23 storm tracker Greg McLaughlin, who's followed these storms all the way in from northwest Oklahoma. If we can, on the left side of your screen, okay, that is Joseph Tyree shot. So he is on uh, just getting ready to come into that storm right now. Um, is he on 412 or... He's on, okay. Okay, here's Tyree. He's on the Turner Turnpike, just about to come into that strongest wind right around Kellyville. Uh, yeah, he's close to Depew. So he's just to the southwest of Bristow right now, and he's got a battle ahead of him. He's got a lot of heavy rain, so be really careful on those roads. So he will be uh, coming up into the new six wider part of the turnpike here pretty soon as he gets closer to Bristow. But again, powerful winds coming into the metro area. As meteorologist Mike Grogan was talking about that warm front um, that we've been watching, oftentimes if a storm is right on the warm front, that we will see that help enhance the circulation, kind of like this big push of wind help enhance that circulation close to Manford. Now, one factor is that warm front has not really made it up into the metro area. So this storm is not on the warm front. So it's got pretty much its only 
way to get stronger are its own thunderstorm winds and spinning up that circulation again. There's still a little bit of a circulation up now just to the east of Manford, and that's going to be passing just to the south of Keystone Dam, but it's much, much weaker. We're watching strong straight line winds getting close to Sepulpa and eventually Kiefer. And the good news is, as this storm is not on the warm front, it still could spin up a circulation that would prompt a tornado warning. It may just not be nearly as likely to do that. Off the warm front also means it's moving into slightly more stable air. Remember, we've had a lot of rain this morning. We did not really clear out in Tulsa until late. So west of us, where we saw more sunshine, we had higher instability. Where Tulsa and points to the east were a little bit more stable, these are still going to be powerful thunderstorms, and they're still going to be capable of severe weather. But, fingers crossed, we'll dial this back to a slightly less hazardous severe thunderstorm. It's still going to be powerful as it moves in. Let me do a track on the leading edge of this wind already past Kellyville, and this is going to be right into the metro area and toward Broken Arrow here by 755. The severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 745. That will no doubt be extended as we continue to watch that move toward the east. Again, if we watch that Big push of wind, oftentimes that can develop a couple of little spins here and there along the leading edge of this. Uh, we're looking at that interface zone back to the northwest of Sepulpa right now. What I want to see is no big kinks in this red and green interface. That would not be something we want to see. We're looking in western parts of Tulsa County and just to the south of Wakaiwa, southeast of LOTC, we may see a little bit of one of those right now, but again, it's pretty weak too. So, but again, it's something we're gonna watch. We look back at terminal Doppler radar. This is what we're looking at back into the northeast corner of Creek County. Again, we get into these blues. These are the strongest winds that we're seeing. We do have that severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 745. That includes most of the metro area right now. And we are on with storm center coverage on KRMG. All right, on the left, do we have him to talk to or just his shot? Okay. This is uh, Fox 23's Rick Marinon. He's in Prattville. That wind is just about to come blasting through Prattville right now. And uh, Rick, point your car into the wind, point your car to the west. That's going to be the, uh, the best orientation you can take. I'm looking kind of on the leading edge again here as we watch closely for any kind of indication that we've got a circulation trying to develop. Uh, if there's anything trying, and it's still a long way from the point of concern, would be west of Sand Springs to west of Prattville right now on that interface zone. But again, it does not look like it is a powerful uh, circulation of that. Now, uh, what are we looking at here on the left side of your screen, Hilton? Okay, this is still Prattville. Rick's uh, shot just turning around here. So we're looking at the leading edge of this really strong wind. Prattville's right here. Here comes the leading edge of that wind as we see some folks on 97 trying to hustle and get out of this. Heavy rain falling right now, the strongest winds, and you just saw that powerful lightning strike right there too. Let me expand this view one more time. We have the severe thunderstorm warning. Thankfully, no tornado warnings on our end of the state or in Oklahoma City as this line of thunder continues to sweep to the east and to the southeast right now. Let me do an updated track as we watch uh, Rick's live shot right there. Getting the reflection of his dashboard in the window makes it look a little bit worse than it is, but he's getting ready to get pounded by a lot of wind. Tulsa International Airport, Phil, if you could just swing all our cameras back to the west so we can catch this thing coming in. Owasso, 737, <clears throat> Broken Arrow, 743, Catusa, 745, Keatonville, Keatonville Hill area at about 750. That's going to be the leading edge of these strong winds coming through. Our team coverage continues with Fox 23 meteorologist Mike Grogan. Mike, it's a whole lot of wind, and we continue to watch for any kind of these little circulations. I kind of see one maybe trying to form up yeah, between Shady Grove and Prue, but that may be cut off from any inflow. Yeah, we're going to take a look at that, but I just want to point out just how electric this storm is. Just so much lightning. You want to make sure if you have any kids that are playing outside, move them inside right now in the Tulsa area. Lightning is becoming increasing in concern. Check out the amount of wind and rain showing up there on the left side of your screen. That's what we're going to see right in Tulsa in the next few minutes, uh, just because we are dealing with 
heavy, heavy rainfall rates. We're noticing an inch or more of rain falling as this storm passes, and that's within maybe a window of time of 30, 45 minutes. So incredibly heavy rainfall rates. That means traveling through the Tulsa metro is going to be challenging. And you know those low-lying spots, it could quickly fill with water. Our soils are saturated from morning rainfall. That's an added concern as well. An aerial flood advisory has been put up by the National Weather Service at this point. Okay, let's look at those velocities because the high winds are the other great concern. Some of those highest winds going right through Sepulpa right now. We are still watching some of those circulation features in western Tulsa County. They're very limited right now, so they're not enough to prompt a tornado warning or anything like that, but we just want you to kind of hunker down Sand Springs to downtown Tulsa. Jinx, some of the high winds are moving right there towards you, moving towards the Creek Turnpike zone. That is another spot where we're watching closely, so still getting that leading edge wind approaching basically Highway 75 here really in the next few minutes, uh, and you can see how increasingly dark it is. Okay, on the left side of your screen there, you can also see that gust front moving right in. That's looking down the Creek Turnpike uh, just beyond the Arkansas River there in Jinx. So you can see the leading edge of it very clearly defined and thankfully not seeing any sort of lowering with that kind of a laminar look to that uh, skyline there to that cloud deck. And that is certainly good. That means straight line winds are the predominant thing that we're noticing out of this line coming in out of Sepulpa. Basically that vantage point we're looking from about right there in Jinx towards that higher wind gust area to the west. Uh, another vantage point is looking out towards the uh, area along Riverside Drive. That's near downtown Tulsa. Things are turning increasingly stormy there. Just be aware you don't want to be out driving in this. All this whole line is moving eastward at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. We do have the severe thunderstorm warning in Tulsa effect until 745, I believe, and, and it will likely be extended further east from there. And that line will continue to push eastward and affect more and more southern and eastern zones of our viewing area. And the conditions are still ripe for a spin-up or two along that line. That is what we're uh, concerned about. And we're staying on air right now as this moves through Tulsa so we can track this through a high population area and make sure there are no possible spin-ups. We're watching those closely. James has an update on that. Yeah, as we take a look, again, thankfully no tornado warnings. And I've just tweeted out another a radar picture with an ETA, a storm track here, and I've not seen any organized or sustained rotations over the last few minutes. That's good news. But, as Mike said, it's not to say that's an eliminated threat. Let's take a look at our Fox 23 Skyview Network camera right now. Tell you what, we'll leave that Jinx camera in that shot. I'm going to look at that camera, maybe flip over to Riverside camera, and boy, the lightning flashing right now. And that is, on the left side of your screen, the shot from Jinx looking over the Creek Turnpike just west of the Arkansas River. The shot on your right side of the screen, the big side, the big box here, is from basically River Parks looking over the Arkansas River past the Holly Refinery south and south of Lookout Mountain on down toward uh, Sepulpa and Oakhurst right now. I'm going to kind of show you some of these other cameras that we have going on right now. Um, I don't know if we've seen Tulsa Hills because that's going to be getting really close to some of that heavy rain moving in. I'm going to swing this camera around. You can see all of the lightning popping around this thing, too. Um, and a lot of folks still on Highway 75 right now. But that's the leading edge, that dark shelf cloud coming in, too. And I'll switch over to Warren Place. High atop 61st and Yale. Again, we're a little bit further east, but you can see here this thing comes, and it's going to be powerful as it moves in. We've seen on Doppler radar, at least, uh, winds at times topping 70 miles per hour. As we've talked about, perhaps that this slightly more stable rain-cooled air is preventing this from being a really high-end wind storm for us, but it is still powerful as it moves in. And we look on the left side of your screen, that's the shot from Jinx, uh, just near the Oklahoma Aquarium. And here it comes, rolling into Jinx right now, a little further east. And again, this is from Warren Place. We're looking straight west, straight down 61st Street at some of that really powerful wind moving our way. I'm going to bump back over to Tulsa Hills right now. It is dark, and here comes the heavy rain. Let's go back to Doppler radar, because here comes that rain and the wind into Tulsa. We'll track it as it kind of moves now across the Arkansas River, across downtown Tulsa. It's past St. John, past Hillcrest, past Utica Square. It's rolling up into the fairgrounds right now. There's Promenade Mall, so it's made it to Yale through midtown Tulsa. Further to the south, 
where the winds are a little bit more powerful, Southern Hills Country Club, here's ORU and Jinx, the PSO plant Jinx, not quite getting the heavy rain yet. It's soon to be on the way. Here's Tulsa Hills Shopping Center. And as I look at Tulsa Hills, this is what it looks like on radar. This is what it looks like when we look out from Tulsa Hills. So pounding rain, really dark clouds over Tulsa Hills right now. But as we talked about, I haven't seen any kind of significant indications that we've got organized circulations with it. But uh, we are going to continue to watch it really closely for that. So that's what's moving across south parts of the Tulsa metro. Let's go a little further to the south. This will take us past Jinx. Here is Glenpool, Oak Mulgee Bee Line, Highway 75. Heavy rain crossing over the county line from Creek County into Glenpool right now. Further to the south, Kiefer, and just about to hit Mounds. Really powerful wind taking place. What you got? Okay, some sirens sounding in parts of Tulsa right now. Now, siren policy for Tulsa is to sound, I believe, okay, in Jinx now, 70 mile per hour winds. So... Um, it does look like when we look at high resolution Doppler radar, I'm going to take a look at that right now. Let's just analyze those winds. And yeah, let's take a look. Tulsa Hills. Yeah, that's continuing to, to <laughs> really show that strong wind taking place. So we've got Tulsa Hills on the left side and the right side of your screen. Let me take a look at Warren Place there on the right side of your screen because that's going to be the next one inbound with this really heavy rain coming in. We're looking west. That's 61st Street and off into the heavy rain. We would normally see what we see on the left side of your screen. That's Tulsa Hills, that shopping center. So here comes that wave of wind, rain, and, of course, thunder as well. Let's take a look back into Fox 23 Doppler radar right now. And there is some good news to talk about. High-resolution Doppler radar uh, continuing to show on some of these wind speeds. They may be down a, a couple of ticks here, and that is some great news because earlier, man, this thing looked bad with winds on Doppler topping 70 miles per hour, a couple of spots uh, between 85 and 90 miles per hour up in the sky. We did talk about some of that would be cushioned on the way down. But these wind speeds are down um, a decent amount. So we may be talking 50 mile per hour winds and the difference between 50 mile per hour winds and 70 mile per hour winds when it comes to talk about damage is major. So we're talking some leaves and twigs and some tree limbs down with 50 mile per hour winds, 70 mile per hour winds. We're talking patio covers and some more significant structural damage, whole trees too. Again, right along the leading edge, I'm not seeing any kind of really sustained uh, rotation with it. You holler at me if I'm missing one, but uh, there are a couple little waves in this that we'll have to watch. One kind of moving into jinx right now, but that's a long way away from the point of concern. North towards Sand Springs, uh, there's a little bit of an interface here just to between Sand Springs and Chandler Park right now. We'll watch that. That's still really low magnitude for now, and we're very thankful for that. Let's jump back to reflectivity again. And that's the strongest thunderstorm moving right into the metro area right now. Thunder, lightning, a really heavy rain, and that is sweeping across the city. There is some good news, and that's this thing's moving pretty quickly. So uh, maybe that'll help alleviate our flooding problems. We're still going to get a ton of rain really quickly, but it should not overwhelm drainage systems or, or storm sewers either. Let's check in with meteorologist Mike Grogan. Mike? Right. Uh, now the storm is hitting our Fox 23 studios. We're hearing a lot of thunder. I'm sure you are too if you're watching from Tulsa. And this is kind of what the sky generally looks like. Thankfully, nothing concerning from this vantage point. Let's jump to radar to show you the overall line. The heaviest of the storms basically from the Tulsa uh, area, really Tulsa proper, southward through about Bristow or so. And it's bowing eastward. It's along that leading edge where we find the highest wind gusts and, of course, the heaviest rainfall centered right over Midtown, right over South Tulsa, down to the Creek Turnpike. And you can see there could be a few spots even where we get some small hail, particularly where we see those highest reflectivities showing up there, maybe near Southern Hills or over towards downtown Tulsa. But the heavy rain now pushing up and down Highway 169. That's the leading edge, but the winds and the uh, lightning extent and well back to the west from there as well. Let's jump right to the wind gusts right now. Thankfully, nothing nearly as concerning as what we had before, but still could be enough to blow some patio furniture over, or cause some tree limbs to go down. And of course, that lightning could also be causing some problems. So power outages are a concern as we move through the next 30 minutes here in the
in the Tulsa area. Now off to the west, not much concern for the high winds, but we're watching just that north end, maybe up towards Sand Springs, where we still could end up with something that could evolve into something more of a circulation. Right now, that uh, zone not looking terribly organized. That is the good news. But if you're watching us from Tulsa or eastward, Especially if you're east of Tulsa, you want to make sure those secure objects outside are, um, or those objects are secured outside, or move anything that could be tipped over um, off the patio. Get inside, away from windows and doors. You want to have that lightning safety in mind, and of course, watch as closely as any severe thunderstorm warning could turn into a tornado warning. A severe thunderstorm warning, mainly for the wind, and also maybe up to quarter-sized hail. That being the main threat, and of course, stay inside until the storms pass. You don't want to be in the roadways. As we mentioned earlier, an aerial flood advisory has been issued. It's not a flash flood warning, but some of those key spots around town are likely to get covered in water, at least for a short period of time, and that would make traveling quite challenging in the area. So as we jump back over to radar, I just want to show you once more where the latest heavy rainfall is occurring in all of that lightning. My goodness, we're getting a lot of it there in the south sides of Tulsa. And as we look a little closer into the metro area, this is where we find right in the thick of it right now around Tulsa. So thankfully, we're not seeing much in the way of a circulation feature and uh, the velocity features right now in the Tulsa area just really not a whole lot we do have a you know the where the winds are kind of angling out north and eastward that is of course where we watch for circulations to occur but so far not seeing a whole lot see a little bit of maybe a convergence zone there along I-44 and the uh, midtown parts of Tulsa right now so far that's not a concerning thing but something that bears watching and this higher wind gust probably some of the higher winds are right now in jinx this is pushing along the Creek Turnpike for you, eastward, eventually Broken Arrow. You're probably about 15 minutes away from maybe the height of the storm there, but it's right in the thick of it in Tulsa. And, of course, our vantage point uh, from many of our Fox 23 Skyview cameras showing us just the intensity of the rain and lightning out there. James, I'll have you for an update here. Yeah, as we take a look outside, with the rain moving right over Tulsa, really heavy rain. Want to zoom out and give folks everywhere else an update, too, as we track this severe thunderstorm right through Tulsa with gusty wind. We look to the north, and for the most part, it looks like the storm has kind of split and gone around uh, Bartlesville. Let me play this, and you can see what we're looking at. Yeah, Bartlesville had the heavier rain move just to the north and just to the south over the last hour. How about that? Living right in Bartlesville, right? The heaviest storms kind of split. Uh, one strong thunderstorm, not severe, but that continues to lift across parts of Montgomery County in Kansas. And again, moving to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour. Uh, Little House on the Prairie Museum, Fawn Creek, Deering, Montgomery County State Park, Independence, Riverside Park by about 8.04. Let's go further down the line and we get into Tulsa with this cluster of severe thunderstorms. We are really kind of and a zone of full severe thunderstorm warning from southern Washington County all the way down into the Oklahoma City metro area, too. But as we watch some of these strongest winds move right across the city of Tulsa, and you can see on the left side of your screen, that camera is on the Fox 23 studio. And it's uh, because we can make light of it a little bit with no tornado warnings and the wind speeds apparently coming down just a little bit that it's free car wash day for Fox 23 employees over there in the parking lot with all of that rain falling. I'm going to stop the animation here and I want to show you this camera view. Look how quickly skies have cleared in Manford. Beautiful shot of the sun starting to come through and that is just fantastic but boy you still see a lot of water on the ground. Warren Place still getting pounded with some of that heavy rain. Let's look into Jinx. Uh, we're looking again down the over the Arkansas River Still, at some of this really heavy rain, heavy rain continues to fall in Riverside. I'm going to point that camera actually down so we can see a little bit of the ground here. You see a, kind of a car coming across the 23rd Street Bridge right now in some of this heavy rain. Let's jump into East Tulsa, Highway 169 and 65th. And that camera's not doing so well, so lightning one, camera nothing on this one. Uh, south side of... As we look over Reservoir Hill and toward downtown Tulsa, some heavy rain continues here too. Raceway Park, this is 169 at about 36th Street North. That uh, looks like things are lightening up just a little bit, but the rain is pounding I-44 Memorial Drive now in East Tulsa. Let's take a look at the leading edge of that rain. As it continues to race east across the metro area right now, we zoom right down the street level, and you can see already up toward Lynn Lane, 193rd East Avenue. It's going to be moving across the county line and overlapping the Creek Turnpike outer loop here soon. It's uh, down close to NSU Broken Arrow right now. Uh, we'll say St. John BA, 
Oklahoma Joe's, Bass Pro, right along the Broken Arrow Expressway. There's Broken Arrow High School just getting in on the leading edge of this. Leading edge just moving into the Rose District right now, kind of curves back southwest past... Um, now, not quite to the Warren Theater, but it's at Oliver Middle School and back down into Bixby with really heavy rain falling on North Elementary School and the Intermediate School. Uh, Costco, Spirit Center area, heavy rain. Here's Holland Hall just about on the back edge of some of the heaviest rain falling. We go further south, crossing 151st, that's Highway 67, west of Bixby, but racing toward the east. So the heavy rain continues to fall, but it doesn't fall for long. It is a really heavy rain briefly. This is going to be clearing the area. Notice, despite the fact that we have some flood advisories in effect, the only flash flood warnings we have have been in central Oklahoma, where some of the heaviest rain has fallen for a longer duration. But we will see some street flooding from this, at least over the next hour or so. Let's check in with meteorologist Mike Grogan. One thing we've been watching, a few areas of enhanced wind through the city, one of which is moving along I-44, not too far from St. Francis and that zone. Uh, so far, no pronounced circulation feature with it, but it bears watching. As this is kind of more on the back side of the storm, so not necessarily in the most prone location, but we can actually look out there from more in place. Very close vantage point. You can see right there, we're moving the camera, and you can see, thankfully, things are starting to clear up to the west, and we're not seeing any indication of really high winds from that particular location. That is the good news. Let's extend the, uh, the vantage point out, though, so you can just see the whole line. Once you get north of Tulsa, we are just dealing with general showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder, but the severe threat still extending from Tulsa southward all the way back into southern Creek County. And so with the line orientation the way it is, we might get a little bit more rainfall to occur far southern Tulsa County as we might have more storms kind of following each other, and that would cause more of a flood concern as time goes along. Uh, here is our latest warning right here as we take a look at that. It does now extend into Rogers, Mays, Wagner County, western Muskogee County. That is kind of where we're dealing with some of our strongest storms right now. Uh, right in the metro area, the, the rain is already starting to wind down in southern hills and parts of the western sides of the metro area. 169 Broken Arrow. If you're watching this from here, yeah, it is pouring outside. Getting a lot of lightning out there as well. Uh, so once again, we're dealing with some of those issues as well. So uh, we do have this new warning. It does go into effect uh, all the way until 8 15, and that, once again, includes Claremore, includes areas all the way to about Highway 69 or just beyond, and all the way down to Muskogee. You're included in this warning as well. Mostly concerned about the high winds for this particular warning, uh, but also some hail threat embedded with that. And also, once again, watching the leading edge for any circulation features or within the line as well. These continue to move east at about 30 to 40 miles per hour. Give it another 15, 20 minutes around Tulsa, and we're out of the worst of this. It will continue its way eastward, though, and in more parts of Green Country, and eventually our attention will turn to areas closer to I-40 as the line progresses into our area that direction. Here's a closer look at what's going on a little on a lo local scale from Tulsa eastward with Chief Meteorologist James Adelot. Yeah, again, that's the new severe thunderstorm morning. We're going to keep the coverage going until 8 o'clock because the bulk of this will be out of the metro area. Of course, that is only if another spin-up tornado warning doesn't occur. Right now, as we've looked kind of behind the scenes, at some of the data, we're seeing, again, some very weak circulations, but they're well below the level that we would find really terribly alarming. But I want to do a track on the leading edge of this as it continues to move from East Tulsa, Broken Arrow, back into South Tulsa County, and moves east into parts of Rogers and Wagner, and even Mays County, too. Moving into Bixby right now, Indian Springs Country Club, there's Leonard at 756, Lake Bixoma, south of Leonard at 759, Kawita, Kawita High School at 8.03 to 8.07. Neodache, 8.12. Maisie by 8.16. Shoto, 8.19. Maisie Landing onto Wagoner at 8.29. Whitehorn Cove there on the uh, lake on Fort Gibson at about 8.31. As we take a close in view right into the metro area right now, I'll drop the blue so we can see some storm detail. Yeah, let's see. Look, we're looking due north from Warren Place right now on the again, on the left side of your screen, at one of those spots where we have just a tiny little bit of twist uh, to the wind. But so far, uh, again, it's nothing too terribly organized. It's low magnitude, but it just shows you that that's going to be one spot that we're going to watch. If it stays sustained for 10, 15 minutes, then it's showing this. It's got the organization. Maybe get a little bit stronger, but we haven't seen any of these last very long. 
As we look at velocity right now. Okay, so new tornado warning in Pottawatomie, Seminole County, and that is uh, going to be something we'll watch because that is going to move toward Hughes County and maybe eventually Pittsburgh County too. I'll show you that in just a second. Want to zoom right in on again some of these little tiny areas of circulation. Nothing major here. Close to Promenade Mall might be one. Again, it's it's not at to the point where we're super concerned about it. Just want to show you that we're watching it pretty closely for you. We look back down into South Tulsa County here. I'm going to check back to reflectivity. And again, right on the leading edge, here's Carmichael's where Memorial takes the big turn back east. Um, that, that leading edge, it's not oriented really well where we're super concerned about something on that. But um, we will continue to watch, in general, any part of this whole line of thunderstorms where we've got any kind of notch into the storm or it leans back northwest to southeast. That would be one spot that we would watch closely. We're looking up to the northeast of Bixby right now, but again, we haven't seen any kind of uh, significant sustained or high magnitude uh, circulation with this. We'll go back to velocity right now. Again, I see nothing here that's too alarming to me. Just really heavy rain is pounding down. Uh, Memorial Drive now, it's almost over to Mingo. We've seen some gusty winds out of this, maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour. Thankfully, again, the wind has been a little bit weaker as these storms moved into the metro area. Wide view again, we'll get everybody caught up. We still are watching closely for any kind of these little spin-ups on the leading edge of the storm. Because of that, we've got severe thunderstorm warnings in effect. There's our tornado warning that goes all the way to the Hughes-Seminole County line, just again out of our coverage area, but that's going to be one of these little zones. Because of the orientation, it's able to uh, develop a little bit of organization. You can actually almost see that hook shape to this, just to the northwest of Maud right now. As that moves to the east, it'll be moving over towards Seminole. Let's do a track on it. Again, for, for mainly for folks in Hughes County that will be watching this because this is going to be getting close to Hughes County in about 35, 40 minutes. So Harjo, Pleasant Grove, Seminole, Bowlegs by about 8.05, um, Lima, 8.10, Dixon at about 8.16, so that's the only tornado warning that we have active in the state, but it's also a pretty significant looking uh, rotation too, the way this thing is oriented just to the northwest of Mod right now. Again, we'll look at velocity. Again, we've got some outbounds, inbounds, passing uh, basically just to the northwest of Mod. I'm kind of noisy out ahead of it too, but uh, again, the circulation is still strong enough to warrant that tornado warning down in Seminole and Pottawatomie County. Meanwhile, as we get back into our coverage area, we still have wall-to-wall -wall severe thunderstorm warnings of Fusky and Okmulgee County. And again, this is mainly for wind out of these storms. We get up into Wagoner County and Muskogee County, Rogers, parts of Mays County, over to about Highway 69, and of course Tulsa County and Creek County too with severe thunderstorm warnings. Winds gusting, that's going to be the primary threat from this. Um, again, the magnitude of any of these little swirls is still pretty low as we look at um, Doppler radar data right now. It just appears to be wind and rain. We've had a couple of small hail reports, but not a whole lot. Maybe a couple of quarter-sized hail reports. Nothing like a, a big pounding baseball-sized hail report or anything like that. But leading edge of this continues to push now across the Creek Turnpike outer loop back into parts of Wagoner County. So again, we're going to stay with this until at least 8 o'clock until it clears on out of the metro area. Let's check in with meteorologist Mike Grogan. Mike, it looks like the heaviest rain is out of the city of Tulsa, but we're still watching it closely. We are watching it very closely, and thankfully, uh, more bark than bite with this storm, it appears, regarding the wind. We, we just heard from certified meteorologist Laura Mock in Broken Arrow, and she was basically saying that um, in, in that location, we were dealing with not much wind to speak of, just a lot of very heavy rain, and of course, frequent lightning as well. So uh, thankfully, some good news coming out of Broken Arrow, and probably a lot of Tulsa. However, I did just check with PSO, and their outage map is reporting uh, about 1,000 customers out of power not far from Owasso High School, uh, so just be aware of that. 
uh, could be caused by lightning, that sort of thing, Might, maybe not necessarily because of winds. Also, a few more outages in the south sides of the metro area, but nothing all that significant. That's another indication that the winds are not having a really dire impact on the Tulsa area at this time. But I do want to track one part of this line forward. It is a particularly stronger part near Bixby right now, and as it moves eastward, it's heading right towards Leonard here in the next few minutes. Uh, if you're watching this from Coweta right now, the heaviest part of the storm arriving about 8.02. Uh, as we look a little further downstream, Afton Landing, about 8.17 as this pushes uh, further into Wagner County. Uh, but that is one segment of many segments along these storms that bear watching because we're still dealing with the threat for any possible circulation feature to develop. Thankfully, this is not amounted to be the case in the Tulsa area as it pushed through. But look at all the lightning involved with this. We are going to be dealing with a lot of heavy downpours. We're just looking here uh, not too far from Glenpool right now. And you can just see even in this location along Highway 69, or that would be uh, 67 there, I think. Uh, anyway, Glen Platt's 151st Street right there. Basically, we're going to see heavy, heavy rain. This would not be a good time to be on the roadways in the south parts of the Tulsa County. Let's zoom out. You'll see the storm extends back into Creek County. Watching us from northern Okmulgee County, nothing concerning here. We're involving any circulation feature, just a kind of a general heavy storm. And all that lightning, it goes way back into Creek County. But as this line clears out, we're not thinking there's any other severe weather threat. So once we get this through, things are trending better. Now, I still want to look at that velocity here in the Tulsa area. Still noticing some higher winds coming in through Broken Arrow. That's where we get those brighter green shades right there. But not noticing too many locations where it's really intersecting with the red all that much. That's the good news. If that were the case, we could have a circulation being indicated on Doppler radar. Out there right now, though, the roads are wet. Probably still not a fun time to be driving around, but the visibility already improving. That's how quickly it has moved past uh, the Tulsa metro area. Severe thunderstorm warnings continue on east of Tulsa. Uh, that carries on until 8.15. We do have a tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock for almost the entire viewing area, though. If you live west of Tulsa, north of Tulsa, the storm threat is much lower. The main line continues its way eastward. We'll continue to track that for a few more minutes live, and I'll send it back to Chief Meteorologist uh, James Adelot for that update. Yeah, as we look again at the metro area, the heaviest rain has shifted now east of Tulsa. Let's take a wider view because severe thunderstorm warnings continue now from Tulsa to the east. Heaviest rain has shifted east of Tulsa. Let's look south, though, because we have one tornado warning. It's just outside of our coverage area, but we're watching it closely. This is Potawatomi south of Shawnee, moving into northern Seminole County, but including the city of Seminole for a tornado warning there on the left side of your screen. That's uh, Fox 23 storm tracker Brandon Hubbard, who is on that storm right now in eastern Potawatomi. Potawatomi County moving into Seminole County. So we'll continue. We've got eyes on that storm too. And we're going to keep it here until 8 o'clock and take an hour break. And then we'll be back on with Fox 23 News at 9. And of course, sooner if a tornado warning is issued. But for now, with the threat of tornadoes slowly going down and keeping this thing at I don't want to say garden variety, but kind of an average Oklahoma severe thunderstorm, winds 60 to 65 miles per hour. What we will watch closely is any spots on this line where we could get a circulation developing. You can see uh, Brandon coming up on a couple of first responders there on the highway in that tornado warning. Actually, that was an emergency manager there. So we're watching the heaviest rain now shifting out of northern Broken Arrow into western Wagoner County, New Tulsa area, crossing the Creek Turnpike Outer Loop. Still have heavy rain kind of in the center of Broken Arrow right now. Let's take a close in view here. We do have a couple of little notches here and there in this, but as we look at them on Doppler velocity, they don't appear to be terribly concerning, and that's obviously good news. But we've got really heavy rain falling right now in Broken Arrow especially the south side of Broken Arrow. This is going to be Oliver Middle School, 101st Street South, all the way down to Indian Springs Country Club, across the Arkansas River Bottoms, too, as we continue to watch that. And just to give you an idea, that's, again, on the left side of your screen, that's from Fox 23 storm tracker Brandon Hubbard. He's in Pottawatomie in Seminole County right now. You had a quick glimpse of that wall cloud and now he's going to reposition and gets out on the road. One thing about these storms, they're moving quickly enough. Our storm trackers get good eyes on them, and then for their own safety, they've got to move out of the way of them as well. So that's what we're watching. Metro area, we still have... Okay, okay, Brandon says that's a large tornado on the ground with that storm in uh, Seminole County. Phil, give me a, a location of that if you could. So... 
Again, that's two, yep, just northwest of Bow Legs. Okay. So let's, uh, meteorologist Mike Grogan's also been watching these storms. We still have some low hanging clouds in Tulsa. They're scary looking clouds, Mike, but no really organized rotation here. That's the good news, James. One thing I want to point out, the storm orientation kind of goes more east to west across Creek and Okmoki County. That means the storms are going to last longer in these locations, meaning it's more of a flood concern, less of a high wind or tornado threat from Bristow towards Hectorville and Begg. So even towards Bixby, it, the rain's lasting a whole lot longer than it will up into mid town Tulsa. So that means we're going to get more copious rainfall and at the rate it's falling, flooding on roadways is certainly a concern. This is a severe thunderstorm warning for uh, an, about another 20 minutes or so, but that warning does extend well to the east with that leading edge now approaching Inola on Highway 412. But thankfully this part of the line is quick to clear on out. So that means it's more going to be a, just a quick passing thing, hopefully with just a little bit of high wind gust activity and then things will trend down pretty quickly. But we are watching further south. There are more storms down here. Here's the confirmed tornado there near Seminole. This storm is a powerful circuit it's uh, radar confirmed, uh, certainly so, and our own storm tracker also watching it there on the left side of your screen. So this is out. Yeah, okay, so you can actually see that there, um, just kind of making it out if you, um, it's kind of a lower contrast situation, but that is pushing there. It's outside the viewing area, but eventually we'll be pushing closer to us. James, we'll uh, send it over to you for another check of this. Yeah, we continue to watch that because it's just outside of our coverage area, but if that thing hangs on and keeps going, it'll be moving into parts of Hughes County, and then it becomes a big concern to us, so we're going to check up on it. Again, left side of your screen, right on just past that, between the two power poles, just past the power pole. Looks like it's getting rain-wrapped right now, but you can see the swirling with that right now, and that's the very powerful velocity signature. We check correlation coefficient, and look at that blue bullseye. That is debris being lofted by this tornado, so that is a confirmed tornado that is down right now, just to the west-southwest of Seminole, and that's going to continue moving toward the east. Still quite a bit away from our coverage area, but just to show you, we're being really vigilant and watching this really closely for you. No severe storms, no tornado threat in Tulsa right now. Let's take, a again, one more wide view, and then we'll go back to Shay and Sarah as we wrap this up, at least for now. We'll watch this one still outside of our coverage area, but it is a powerful tornado, and it's down right now in Seminole County. For the rest of us, the heavy rain moving out of Tulsa right now, and we still have the threat of maybe some wind gusts between 50 and 60 miles per hour in parts of Rogers, Mays, Wagoner, and Muskogee County. But Shay and Sarah, it looks like the tornado threat, at least for now, in our coverage area, has diminished. But we'll continue to watch that storm in Seminole County, too. All right, James. So, yeah, it seems like we kind of miss, miss the, the big stuff for now. Mm -hmm. But that tornado on the ground, of course, we will keep you updated on that as it gets closer to us. We are checking out a few uh, damage reports, mainly from lightning mm -hmm. and also a few power outages. We will keep you updated on that. Yeah, so much lightning out there. And we also have several other big stories that we are working on for you that did not get to air at 6 o'clock, yes. including the case for the Tulsa Race Massacre reparations. That is moving forward. So look for live team coverage coverage of our storm coverage and other news of the day starting on Fox 23 News at 9.